Okay, so um, the story of um, Perkin Warbeck happens in the 1490s. Um, Perkin Warbeck is a, a pretender to the English throne um, uh, during the period of uh, Henry Tudor, Henry the Seventh, um, and um, you know there were several uh, pretenders to the uh, throne during the uh, to the English throne during the. Uh, reign of Henry the Seventh, because Henry the Seventh's claim on the English throne was just highly suspect, highly uh, disputed. It wasn't very strong. It uh, came down through the line of women, and uh, there was a you know bastardy involved and so forth. And um, but Henry was occupied after the Battle of Oswald, occupied the throne of England, and that. You know he was in situ, and you, if you wanted to push your claim, you had to you had to come come up against him. And uh, um, there were several uh, attempts. You know, per, uh, Lambert Simmel, Perkin Warbeck um, uh, are the most famous of them, both of whom came out of Ireland. Um, Lambert Simmel in the fourteen eighties, and Perkin Warbeck in the fourteen nineties. Perkin Warbeck uh, claimed to be, and his supporters claimed him to be, um, uh, Richard of Shrewsbury, Duke of York the younger of the princes in the tower, the children of Edward the uh, Fourth. Um, he, uh, but you know, a lot of stuff about the Perkin Warbeck story, like the Lambert Simmel story, um, is just full of uncertainties. We, 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 we really do not know. Um, and, um, you know, even the name Perkin Warbeck, like the name Lambert Simnel, uh, is, is actually a Tudor name. It's actually a, a, a derisory um, formulation, you know, especially the Perkin part, which means like a little thing. And, um, uh, but according to his confession, which of course was um, 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 derived, uh, you know, under duress, which is torture. Um, he, um, he, uh, he was born in uh, Tournai in, um, in the Low Countries, uh, present-day Belgium, and um, his father was uh, um, Jean de Warbeck, uh, uh, who was comptroller of the city of uh, the town of Tournai, um, and um, when he was uh, Piers, uh, Piers War, his name may, be, may have been Piers Warbeck or Perkin, um, not Perkin, but um, Peter, Peter or Piers. Um, Piers, um, when he was um, uh, ten or eleven years old, his mother brought him to Antwerp um, to put him either either to put him into school or to put him into trade. Um, but uh, you know, between one thing and another, he was he's, he was associated with several masters in and around Antwerp and Middleburg. Um, before he ended up being uh, a page in the uh, in the household of Sir Edward Brampton, and Brampton uh, is a sort of mysterious figure um, who um, is associated with the House of York. Um, he uh, was uh, a Portuguese Jew, a Jew from Portugal, and he uh, converted to Christianity in England and took on the name Edward Brampton. And, um, you know, there are several payments to uh, Edward Brampton for services um, in, uh, from the treasury of Edward IV and also from the treasury of Richard III. Um, Anyway, Brampton, um, the boy is with Brampton for with Brampton in the household of Edward Brampton for a couple of years, and um, n next thing we know, he turns up. Uh, Perkin Warbeck turns up in Cork in fourteen ninety one, working for um, Brampton's involved by the way in uh, you know the pepper trade and pepper's big business in Europe, um, expensive commodity and uh, and also in silks and you know just basically trading around bringing stuff up from North Africa and Portugal up to Northern Europe. Um, so Perkin Warbeck turns up in 1491 in Cork City. Um, he's working for this Breton uh, trader uh, who's involved in the silk business and you know bringing up fine goods from uh, the south of Europe and trading them in northern Europe. Um, and then he um, he's so he's basically his job. He's 17 years old. He's a pretty looking boy, and he his job is to model these fine clothes, these fine silks, and. Um, boots of Spanish leather um, for these uh, you know these these hoary old Irish uh, land owning uh, people and um, uh, and 
they hail him as of course as a Yorkist stronghold, um, and they hail him as as, as you know a, a prince of the blood. You know, U Europe and, and England at this time are um, are uh, rife with stories. You know uh, that the princes uh, the princes' bodies have never been found. It's not clear. Many people want to believe that they're not dead, and so they do believe that they're not dead, and they believe that especially the younger boy, um, is, uh, you know, escaped. Uh, from the Tower of London, the older boy was known to be sick, but the younger boy was believed to have escaped, and there were many such many such stories. So anyway, they they believed that this boy, who just seemed to, to you know so elegant, so so grand in his silks and whatnot. Um. Anyway, they they um they hail him as a prince of the blood, and he's uh, he's honoured in that way. And the Earl of Desmond gets behind us and. Uh, um, next thing he's shipped off to Margaret of York, uh, who's the Dowager Duchess of Burgundy, and uh, she who had, you know, Ed, she's a sister of Edward IV, she, and she's bitterly opposed to um, uh, Henry Tudor, um, who has, you know, killed her brother, Richard III, and, um, and, and, and ousted the House of York, and... Um, um, Margaret of York has previously supported per, uh, Lambert Simnel with um, money and troops and so on. Um, anyway, this boy Perkin Warbeck is sent over there, and he um, he's he's treated. She really treats him. She really believes that he's. Um, uh, she really believes that he's uh, he, that he's he's the true son of York, and uh, um, and she should know because she's followed a few and. Um, so uh she um and but but not only her but also all the courts in Europe, the French court and the court of the Holy Roman Emperor, he is treated and recognized uh, all across Europe as a prince of the blood, uh Richard Duke of York. And um in fourteen ninety five she uh she trained she sends him to England, um uh you, you know they landed you know with three ships and uh, s uh, some troops and uh, they expect the english to for some reason they expect the english to be to be enthusiastically uh, you know but actually the english don't care about his claim at all and nobody comes to meet him at, 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 at a deal in kent and um except henry tudor's troops and um 150 of uh, perkin warbeck perkin warbeck's men are killed at deal and perkin warbeck uh, before they even finish disembarking, and Perkin Warbeck himself doesn't even set foot on English soil, and eventually they're driven off, and they uh, they're missing for a while, and then they turn up in Waterford, back in Ireland, and um, they lay siege to the uh, harbour in Waterford, and uh, the Earl of Desmond comes from the landward side with troops, and uh, Waterford, of course, is a crown is a crown stronghold, and um, but Edwin Poynings. Who Edward Poyning, who's the uh, Lord Deputy, comes from Dublin with uh, uh, troops, and uh, and uh, uh, the seat of Waterford is broken, and again Perkin Warbeck um, disappears, and um, um, he he's, he's making and missing for a while, and uh, turns up the following summer in um, the following year, fourteen ninety six, in um, in Edinburgh, in Scotland. Uh, at the court of James the Fourth, and uh, James the Fourth also recognizes him as uh, Richard of York, and he uh, marries um, James the Fourth marries him to his cousin, um, the daughter uh, Lady Catherine Gordon, the daughter of the Earl of Huntley, um, and um, and James sets about. Um, Organizing an army uh, to lead this uh, son of York into uh, his kingdom, um, and uh, in September 1496 they cross the border into England, and um, the the Scottish troops, however, just start raping and pillaging all over the place, and uh, it just ends up being a mess. And uh, you know, Perkin Moore because they're carrying the the, the Royal English standard, and uh, the. The Scots are just absolutely laying waste to, you know, to the uh, to the to his subjects basically, and um, uh, it ends up being a, just a horrible mess. And James and uh, Perkin Warwick fall out, and um, uh, and the the Lord Neville uh, comes up from Newcastle, and the whole thing they just all disperse and they go back to Edinburgh. James is done with Warwick now, puts him on a boat called the Cuckoo. Um, and just says, good luck to you, good luck son, <laughs> have a nice day, get out of here, take your wife, go, 
and um, and uh, so Warwick ends up back in Ireland, uh, back in the south of Ireland under the protection protection of the Earl of Desmond. Um, uh, by now he's down to like just a handful of followers. It's just a ragtag of, of of fools, and um, but then uh, this Cornish people in the southwest of England rise because the tax is being imposed on them to pay for the Scottish War, um, and um, uh, Perkin Warbeck goes over, um, you know, helped by the Earl of Desmond, goes over, lands in Cornwall, and um, is proclaimed on Bodmin Moor. Uh, as Richard the Fourth, and um, he says, you know, I am your king, and I will stop all these taxes, and everything will be lovely under me. Come follow me, and so six thousand of them do follow him, and um, they march on Exeter. They take the city of Exeter, and then they're moving on to Taunton, and um, and then they're confronted with um, um, Henry Tudor's troops, and again Perkin Warbeck um, flees again. And uh, he's fled from every confront he's, he, he, so far, um, uh, every confrontation, and um, not much of a warrior. And um, he uh, is goes into sanctuary in a monastery in Hampshire. Um, he, he's uh, brought out of it, and uh, um, the uh, the leaders of the um, of the Cornish rebellion are uh, executed, and the um, the the. Cornish hordes are dispersed, and um, Perkin Warwick is brought to London uh, and uh, made a mockery of. Basically, you know, he's paraded through the streets of London, pelted with mud and shit and whatever vegetables. And um, uh, you know, uh, Henry Tudor has done a very good job on opposition research. He's uh, he's already mocked his claim sufficiently. Nobody in London either believes or wants to believe uh, in uh, this Perkin Warbeck character. Um, he's taken uh, to the Tower of London, interrogated, confesses he's an imposter. And then, importantly, after this, he's treated well. Um, he's treated with respect. Um, the, you know, there is something about this boy. He's not nothing. And, um, you know, he uh, he's allowed, after that, once he confesses that he's an imposter, he's allowed uh, live at the court of Henry the uh, seventh as a gentleman and uh, he's under house arrest he's not allowed to mix with his wife um, but he's you know he attends royal banquets and as I say he's treated with respect but after about 18 months he uh, is bored with this or is unhappy with it and he attempts to escape and he's uh, caught and uh, then he's put in the Tower of London uh, with the uh, poor Warwick boy, the um, Earl of Warwick, the uh, son of uh, Duke of Clarence, and uh, who's been the, the poor boy, uh, Warwick boy, has been kept in solitary confinement, you know, since he was a child, and he's completely, you know, around the twist. And um, you know, the the, the um, contemporary uh, things say that uh, he did, that the poor lad didn't know, wouldn't know a goose from a capon. Anyway, he's, um, Warbeck is put in with him and the two of them uh, an attempt, attempt an escape from the Tower of London. It's probably a trap. They're caught and they're hung in November, taken to Tyburn and hung, drawn and quartered uh, in November 1499. And so, you know, in killing Warwick, he's, uh, Henry Tudor is getting rid of a, a, a rival to the House of Tudor. And in killing uh, Perkin Warwick, he's killing a stupid pretender. And uh, But, um, you know, it is important, well, it's not important, but it's, um, it is interesting to note that many people did, there was something about him, uh, Francis Bacon and many who wrote a biography of, of um, Henry VII, um, many people, uh, he, Francis Bacon believed that uh, Perkin Warbeck may well have been an illegitimate son of um, Edward the Fourth. Um, uh, Edward the Fourth had many illegitimate children, um, and or he may have be even been uh, a child of of Richard the um, Third. Uh, you know, he's, he apparently he really did look like Edward the Fourth. Um, so there was something about him, um, but uh, he um, that that's his story. Anyway, life and death of Perkin Warbeck.